Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's October 30th, 2018. It's a gorgeous fall day. Uh, we don't get too many of these sunny days. It's actually the last day that we had some decent sun was October 10th and today's the 30th. So uh, I'll take these great days when they, when they do come. Over this last week, I've been working in the food forest. Uh, one of the jobs that I've been doing is making protective cages out of concrete reinforcing mesh. Uh, similar to the uh, the tomato cages that I've created in the past in a video I'll post in the upper right hand corner. Uh, and a recent video that showed modifications uh, to the tomato cages, I'll post that in the upper right hand corner as well. Well one of the goals that I have in our food forest, since our property isn't all fenced in, and we have different areas around the property which is open, has an open access to all wildlife and we really enjoy the wildlife. This is a sanctuary so the wildlife are welcome here. However, uh, one of the things that I'm always trying to do is protect as, as many of these fruit and nut bearing trees as I can and some of the berry producing bushes. Now we try to plant many more of the of the desirable the the herbivore desiring uh, plants a, as we can, like the comfrey. Right now, that the comfrey, which is lo loaded all over the property, is being consumed like wildfire. Even though there's some there's no snow on the ground yet, the white-tailed deer absolutely love it. But the white-tailed deer we're in. Uh, uh, rutting season right now so the the deer are going to the bucks are going to be rubbing the velvet off their antlers and doing damage to some of our fruit and nut trees I hope the wind isn't too bad they I've lost a few of our almond trees in the past and they really take a while before they start producing some of our nut trees and all so I've modified our our concrete mesh uh, cage design so that it's larger and it encompasses our various size uh, bushes and trees. So like this concrete mesh um, uh, cage is approximately four foot in diameter. And we have them from the tomato size cage, two foot in diameter, three foot in diameter, four foot in diameter, and so on. I think four foot is the largest one I've made so far, but I'm still going through the process. Some of the trees, I'll be modifying our, uh, our tree tubes to protect the main trunks as well. Now, many of the trees around here, I've gone ahead and pulled the tree tubes off either in the spring or during the summertime because the trees were actually outgrowing the tree tubes and, and not allowing adequate air, uh, air flow and all, but the trees had actually uh, made their way up above the top of the tree tubes, which are five foot, and that's the height of these concrete uh, mesh uh, cages, protective cages. So what I thought I'd do is show you how I'm actually uh, going through the process. I use Bumblebee, the mini excavator, to load um, each one of these rolls, and these are five foot wide rolls onto a steel pipe that I mount on the back of my uh, trailer. Now you can ro unravel these on the ground. I've done that before. I've done it in my uh, dump trailer just in the bed of the, the trailer. I know people will do it in the back of their pickup truck. Uh, but this is a better way for me. Once I load it, I go ahead and put two 2x4s two in the stake rack places for the uh, dump trailer. And that allows me to pull the concrete mesh off the roll and uh, and measure out uh, each one of the one of the rolls to the desired length. So how do I determine what the desired length is? Well, the formula that I use is two times pi, which there's the abbreviation is 3.14 times the radius. So two times pi times the radius. So if I have a, a tomato cage that's two foot in diameter, half of that is one. So you're doing one times two times pi, 3.14. So what I end up doing is I, I measure out a six foot length. So the circumference ends up being just over six foot. And so my tomato cages aren't actually two foot. They're about 23 inches in diameter. So what I do is I use a uh, four and a half inch um, 
angle grinder with a diamond tipped uh, blade on it and I cut the fabric once I've, I've determined the length that I want it. Okay, I'm over here by the dump trailer. I've got the uh, concrete mesh uh, suspended on the back of the dump trailer. You can see the 254 holding the steel bar uh, which supports the roll so I can just roll it off as needed. Uh, what are the tools that I use to, for this whole process? Well, I use Bumblebee, the mini excavator, and a strap, and that steel pipe in the center of it. And I use a dump trailer with the, tra with the uh, dump lifted up quite a bit so it holds the roll at this end. This can all easily be done on a floor on a flat surface uh, to roll it out. It's a bit of a challenge to keep the roll from trying to run itself back up, but you can use a board as I've shown in the previous video to help keep the, board, the, the roll from curling back up on you when you go to cut it. Now I've used uh, bolt cutters in the past. You can look at the video previously on how I've used that. But nowadays what I use in order to cut the, the rebar, the first tool that I use is a pair of vice grips. Let me grab a pair. So a locking pair of vice grips like this. I use this to, to uh, remove the, the tabs that are usually sticking out on one of the, the, uh, the, the beginning part, part of the roll because I don't want any little tabs, wire tabs sticking out anymore. They grab onto things and it's easy to get cut on them. So I go right along, I grab a hold of each one of the little tabs at the beginning of the roll and I bend them basically two to three times and the tabs snap right off. So the vice grips work out good for the very first step. I, I forgot to mention, actually the first step is removing the straps that are holding this, this, comp this uh, uh, concrete mesh in a very tight roll. So there's a lot of pressure on it when, when it's strapped together and when you cut those straps that whole uh, roll might spring and, and, uh, and release it a great deal of, of pressure. So you want to make sure you don't have your fingers in between the, uh, the, the, all the pieces of wire on the roll. You want to have those clear. I wear safety glasses when I'm doing this. I wear good gloves. I like wearing a jacket, with, like this is a Carhartt jacket, Carhartt pants, because it's real easy to get cut on this an old, dirty, rusty metal. You don't want to get, uh, get an infection. So once I've done that and I've gone ahead and I've got all the little tabs off the leading edge after uh, releasing the pressure from opening up a new, uh, a new roll of this concrete reinforcing mesh. Then once I've, I've got that set, I go ahead and I pull the roll out to approximately where I think I'm going to have to cut it. I stand on it and then I count my, my, uh, my squares. So if I'm going to do a a uh, two foot diameter, that means I'm going to need six foot of running length in order to make a diameter of two feet. If I want to have a diameter of four feet, I need to, to, to cut off 12 feet, which means I've got to count 24 of those six, uh, six inch squares. I hope that makes sense. Then I use my uh, angle grinder as opposed to using um, the bolt cutters as I've used in the past and this has a diamond tip blade without the notches in it for cutting concrete and all. So this is a smooth edged four and a half inch steel diamond tipped uh, blade for a, a four and a half inch angle grinder. Uh, you can use a battery operated one. This one has a cord on it <laughs> and that works really well. Then I go ahead and I cut the fabric right next to the, 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 uh, the next, uh, what I'm going to call, it's a vertical if you're, uh, a vertical wire <laughs> if you're standing it up, but as you're seeing it now laying down, one of the horizontal wires. So after the 12th uh, tab for, for, uh, for six foot length, which is going to make a two foot diameter uh, tomato cage or bush bush cage or, or a young tree tube cage I'm going to cut right along that wire so that there aren't any tabs sticking out then I set it to the side and I put it with all the other ones I, I make them four deep uh, for each one of these these are all two footers so there's uh, three rows of five so there's uh, 15 uh, times four uh, 60 uh, cages right there 
and then in another location I've got three footers and four footers so that they can be used in various spots in in the food forests uh, either for wider bush bushes like our um, like our high bush uh, cr uh, cranberries but uh, they can be used for various sized trees where the limbs are coming out as well then the next phase after I've cut off right close to that bar I've got a lot of six inch steel tabs sticking out uh, these are sticking off the other part of the roll the part that I cut off that's what I what I do then is I just fold them over and then twist them to the side and they come off relatively easily fold and twist fold and twist all the way down and I make sure to collect all these up so I don't get a uh, one of these penetrating one of my expensive tires and on the tractor or other piece of pieces of equipment we've got here so that's the process of what I go through again uh, the formula is two times pi times the radius so I think this system can work out pretty darn well uh, for making protective cages for whatever size whatever diameter plant that you want to put put these cages around it works this material is pretty easy to work with the tools are are readily available uh, you can do it on the ground you can do it in the back of your pickup truck to roll these off using a board to uh, keep the roll from rolling back up on you and uh, the thing that I love about these cages is we can put multiple uh, cages together they take up less of a footprint of uh, space where, where you're storing them when you're not using them they're more easily transportable they don't take up as much space they're hardy they don't they don't uh, they don't break down so quickly they're, I've been using them for a few years now and and they've been fantastic they're just like new they're easy enough to work around if you've got to do pruning. It's real easy to use the, the uh, to, to unhook the uh, cable ties to get at them. Oh, the other thing I should have mentioned is how I anchor them to the ground. I use two pieces of half inch rebar that are five foot in length. Drive these down on either side of the uh, of the tomato cages that we have. So how am I cutting this, this concrete reinforcing mesh? Uh, well, there's, there's a couple of tools that I've used over time. Uh, the first tool that I used were uh, bolt cutters, uh, some large bolt cutters. And I've got a couple different sizes. I got one for cutting half inch rebar, and I use this one for uh, cutting this fabric. I've got three different sizes, a smaller one, is best it's less weight for you to use the, the the mesh that you're cutting the wire that you're cutting is relatively thin gauge uh, metal but what I've been using lately is an uh, a four and a half inch angle grinder grinder with a diamond tipped uh, blade and this has the smooth edge it doesn't have all the little notches in it and it doesn't have a face on it that's diamond tipped as well. It's just the circumference. We got quite a bit of cutting surface. And, uh, and that works very, very well. So I, what I do is once I've measured out the length of the fabric that I want to have, uh, and I use this going right down next to the edge of the uh, roll, the other side is going to have the tabs sticking out. And then what I do is I take and just fold that tab over and twist it to the side. And I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. What I'm going to do is roll out a section of this. This one's going to be just under 30, uh, be about 32 and a half inches uh, in diameter. So we'll take a look at that.
So this way, because it's a little oblong, is 37 inches, and this way here is 34 inches. So it's just under 36 inches, and it's 18 squares. Uh, and each one of these squares is six inches apart. Now I need to cut off the, the remaining tabs, but I don't have to use the, the, diamond, uh, the diamond edge uh, angle grinder in order to do that. All I have to do is fold over the tab and then twist it to the side. Fold it over, twist it to the side. 